Değerli bir konuğumuz. Geçen yıllardan da aslında kendisini tanıyoruz ve kendisinin kıymetli konuşmalarıyla bizlerle birlikte olacak ve keynote konuşmasıyla gelişmekte olan piyasalarda dövizde yaşanan sorunlardan bahsedecek. Özellikle günümüzde kurların arasındaki farklılıklar konuşulurken kendisinin bu konuşması da önemli bir nokta diyelim ve hemen kendisini anons edelim. LBV Varlık Yönetimi Yönetim Kurulu Başkanı ve Baş Ekonomist ve Meyer Resources Genel Müdürü ve Başkanı Sayın Cornelia Meyer'ı davet edeceğiz. May you might please dear Cornelia Meyer. Welcome. Please. Good morning and thank you very much for your kind introduction. So I thought I'm, I'm going to speak about macroeconomics, but as we are in the real life, I thought, and I need to just get my phone to bring it up, we, I can just tell you the, your new ter medium-term economic plan. I have it on my little thing here if I get to it. Um, we have, um, it's under the, it's under, it came out a few minutes ago, it's under the theme of balancing discipline and change. And the aim is, let me just tell you, I thought as we are, as we are here, oops, here we are, we, um, the economy should grow by 2.3% 2019, 3.5% 2020, and 5% 2021. Um, the inflation will be 20.8% for this year, 15.9% for next, 9.8% for 2020, and 6% for 2021, inshallah. Um, um, obviously, we fight with inflation, um, um, uh, and, and, in, uh, and the budget will save 60 billion of Turkish lira in 2019. Um, in decreasing the current account deficit will be another focus, um, and, and as will be two million of um, new jobs. Um, but there's a there's, a, there's the establishment of the Public Finance Transformation and Change Office in the Ministry. So that's, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what the Ministry, what your Finance Minister has just um, declared. I thought as we are talking about the economy, it's good to know what, what, what's, what's happening in the real world. Now to my talk. Um, the Chinese once said, may you live in interesting times, and oh my. Do we live in interesting times? Um, as far as emerging markets have been concerned, we have seen somewhat of a perfect uh, storm. Uh, there is a sort of an, an, an unholy um, alliance or an unholy um, uh, coincidence that we have trade, on one hand, we have trade wars going on, which gives huge insecurity, especially also insecurity to foreign, to, to companies who are very export driven to countries, emerging em economies with very export driven economies. Turkey is exporting a lot. 60% of the exports go to the EU. So this is, this is very important. Um, and you then have the, um, because the US economy is going so well, the Federal Reserve is going up with um, the um, interest rates, which means that in a world where things are becoming less certain, if you get a little bit more yield in a certain environment, money will drift that way. Um, we had a recent really big emerging markets turbulence and it all started here. It started when um, uh, Donald Trump doubled the tariffs on steel and aluminium, which let the Turkish lira slide. It went up to 45% and it went up, uh, down 45% and up again. At some stage it was down as much as 70% um, against the dollar. Um, it then spread like a wildfire. Um, you saw Argentina who um, went up with its interest rates um, to 60% and still um, the, the, the Argentinian peso fall, uh, fell. You saw it, all of these um, emerging markets who suffered had um, different, it had different reasons. Um, in Turkey, it is, it is clearly a, a, um, the, 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 the worry about exports, it was clearly uh, the worry about private sector debt. In Argentina, it was very much the worry about public sector debt. Then you had, um, so, then you had South Africa, um, uh, Indonesia, all followed. And what you could see is the countries with huge current account deficits were by far the ones who were the most hit. 
And that's where I have to say, your um, government is doing absolutely the right thing by saying our priority is to reduce the current account deficit. Um, in the case of Turkey, it, was, it is not just Turkey, it's the near, Turkey's near neighbor is the European Union. 60% of its exports go to the European Union. Um, and obviously the private sector who has to pay back within a year about $180 billion worth of debt, or the private sector about $100, $120 billion worth of debt, um, it, the, the, this goes, the, the big banks in that is BBVA in Spain, BNP Paribas in France, and Unicredito in Italy. So you see a certain spillover effect to those markets as well. Um, as, as I said before, Argentina is sovereign debt. Um, the problem with, uh, with that is they've now been, they've now um, re renegotiated to get $50 billion from the IMF, however, uh, they have to pay back $25 billion um, next year already in terms of sovereign debt, so that's, that's, that's sort of only, they're only getting half of the benefits of it. Um, so, so we've seen, we've seen what we've seen, we've seen, we've seen, we've seen what, what, what has happened. Now, this emerging markets route has spread, as I said, like a wildfire to all of the emerging markets, although it's different reasons. But at some stage, you, these things create their own narrative. And as, we, as this very excellent panel before us said, it's then the credibility that's lacking and, 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 and investors flee. So what should governments do? And the, what, what the government did here with coming out with its targets was certainly a good thing. Um, the advice we got um, from, the, from, the, from the panel was certainly uh, very wise. Um, but we sh and, and there's that much that the, that, that the governments can do. One of the things that's very important is that you feel that is good technocrats, good that there's confidence, that there's confidence also in the central bank and that you show that the central bank has some independence, a certain degree of independence from the government. And you saw what happened when the central bank asserted its, um, its independence in um, last week here. It did a world of good to, um, to, the, to the Turkish lira. It went up and it stayed up. Yes, it went down a bit and it stayed up. Same happened in, in Russia. So it's really important to have that institutional capability. Even if it's at some stage, if you sit in the government, it's annoying to have these people who do something you don't want them to do. It's important for the confidence in the market that the external um, observers and investors get the feeling that those forces are at play of an independent central, of the independent central bank. Now, Sadly, there's only that much a government can do internally. As you can, you know, do the restructuring, all the things, we cannot be insulated from the geoeconomic trends. And where we have a real problem here is trade. If we, we, seeing, we, we are seeing these trade tensions going up, we may get an ag agreement on NAFTA, that's nice, but it doesn't do anything for, for people in, in, in for, for countries in Asia, or the Middle East, or Africa for that matter. Um, but when, when you see the tensions between China and the, and the US, that would have ramifications. If these trade barriers go up, um, there's very little that uh, open economies can do to, to insulate themselves. And when you have the globe, which it, and it will have a ripple effect into global growth. And when global growth goes down, what happens then is you, you obviously, the, nobody's consuming more, you're exporting less. So that's really a, that's really a big problem where you cannot insulate yourself. Um, but uh, we have to, I guess we have to live with, with, um, with, with, what, with what we have. Um, the, the whole thing that, we, what, what we, that, that governments need to be really careful with is to try and ensure that you don't have, that you can manage the storm with the minimum amount of disruption, especially in the real sector. The 
if you have, if the, if, if the financial crisis spills over, and especially as we have now have in, in Turkey with all these loans having to be repaid from the private sector, if companies go bankrupt, you then have more unemployment, which is sort of a vicious circle. We see that now in Argentina. And what happens when you have that vicious circle is that you are losing your middle classes shrink. And we all know, in order to have a viable, sustainable economy, and to have a sustainable and safe society, you need a strong middle class. So the advice to any government would be to do whatever it takes to keep, you know, to keep that middle class, to keep employment going to the level possible and keep that middle class going. So in that sense, I would say that what I've seen of this economic um, plan is, looks very good. I'm, it also looks very aspirational. I'm not sure you can go down to 6% by 2021 in, of inflation. But, um, but it seems that the government here has now taken the right measures. It seems markets have reacted right. So let's see where it takes us. Um, and let's hope Mr. Trump and Mr. Xi Jinping can find an agreement and we don't go into full-fledged trade wars. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If anybody has a question, I'm happy to take it. Thank you very much, please. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Evet, çok teşekkür ediyoruz sevgili Cornelia Mayer'a. Bizlerle birlikte olmuştu. Aynı zamanda kendisi danışma kurulumuzda da bilgileriyle ve tecrübeleriyle bizlere her zaman destek oluyor fikirleriyle.